Radio Show and Podcast. I am your host, Richard Franzi, and this is podcast number 1058. You know, a good job is more than a paycheck. It is essential to creating a stable, safe, and educated community. And for many, it's a lifeline. Since 1993, Women Helping Women served over 80,000 job seekers to find gainful employment. And that's why I've interviewed, uh, excuse me, and that's why I've invited the CEO, Janie Best, to come and share the services and how they tailor them for every individual and how that delivers an effective result. Janie, welcome back to Critical Mass Radio Show and Podcast. Thanks, Richard. Glad to be here. It's awesome to have you here. Why don't you, um, before we get into the mission of the organization and the organization beyond what I read in the open, tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of your path to where you are now. Okay. So... Probably the best way to tell you how I ended up here is to tell you about my childhood. Um, Dad was a Marine uh, stationed in Camp Pendleton when I was born. We moved around an awful lot when I was growing up. So I went to 27 schools in 12 years. Ended up somehow in the middle of New Mexico uh, in my senior year and uh, decided to stay there. Put myself through school. Went to business college. And my goal was to go and work for an oil company as an analyst. I realized about really? three quarters of the way through my senior year that I was going to be bored out of my mind, <laughs> not doing anything important that was going to make a difference. A friend of mine told me, you know, you should really look into nonprofit work, and I have the great, a great nonprofit for you. And I said, well, what's that? And he said, it's the Boy Scouts of America. You'll love it. Mm-hmm. Six months later, I was wearing a Boy Scout uniform and oh, wow. spent 15 years really? with Boy Scouts. Mm-hmm. So I've uh, been in nonprofit work for about 25 years now, mm-hmm. mostly youth organizations, Boy Scouts, YMCA, Children's Bureau, and then was approached with this opportunity nearly seven years ago. How did you get to Orange County? Uh, with the Boy Scouts. Oh, so that was with Boy the Boy Scouts. Scouts. Okay. So I spent uh, eight years in Ventura County with the mm-hmm. Ventura County Council and then accepted a job with more responsibility in Orange County and awesome. was there for almost eight years. Okay. Went to the YMCA in Huntington Beach. I was the executive director there for about three years. And then to Children's Bureau, which does prevention and treatment of child abuse. Right. I was doing development work with them. And then I was approached by an executive search firm and said, we have this great opportunity for you, and we really need someone just like you. And this is Women Helping Women? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I said, well, I don't really know anything about workforce development. And they said, it's okay. You've got really the great, uh, just great experience, great development. You have the an opportunity to really build a big organization out of a very small one. And I was so intrigued when I first, when I went for my first visit, I said, wow, this is an amazing organization that has, a, you know, really tangible results. It really makes a life-changing difference for people. I said, this is something I can really get my hands around and, and um, be really excited about. And that was seven years ago. So did you appreciate at the time kind of what I read in the open, how important a good job is to a person? No. Okay. No. I I had no idea. Right. And, you know, at the time, our organization was pretty small. Uh, Our main programs were professional apparel for men and women. So it was about getting a job, but it really has, our, our organization has dramatically changed since that time and now now I fully understand the difference that it makes for an entire community so we're can we talk about it now sure okay sure. so um, women helping women but that's not your only focus right is Correct. Uh, I mean I, I I think of it and I want to finish the sentence and say men to work right uh, is that is that appropriate still no okay. well so our, so I probably should tell you about the how we were founded and kind yes. of go from there let's do that so back in 1993 we were founded by two women who were victims of domestic violence they met in a shelter they knew firsthand how difficult it was to go out and find a job just to put together enough money to buy a professional outfit right. when they fled with the clothes on their back so once they got back on their feet, they said, we're going to start collecting gently used women's professional clothing. They were throwing it in the trunk of the car and driving from shelter to shelter trying to find women who needed help. So mm. it was very grassroots. Right. That first year, we served 67 women. This last year, we served uh, 8,700 men, women, and teens with our employment supportive services. 8,700 in a year. And we'll be wow. over 10,000 ten- oh this year. Oh, my goodness. Um, so when the economic downturn happened in 2009, right. uh, we were still doing professional clothing solely for women who were victims of domestic violence. Our nonprofit partners were domestic violence shelters. And then we started having um, conversations with men in the community saying, you know, I really need help too. 
And so we started serving men with professional clothing. But then uh, people were saying, you know, I really need more than just an outfit to be marketable when there are thousands and thousands of applicants for every position. So we started doing some one-on-one job development work, creating resumes for our clients, and doing a little bit of counseling. But there was so much demand for our services that we couldn't keep up. So in that first year or so, about through the middle of 2010, we're doing a lot of one-on-one work with a couple of hundred clients a year. And we said, okay, how can we really, really make an impact on our clients? And we okay. looked at um, uh, providing <coughs> employment readiness workshops for our clients. Okay. And so we started doing basic job seeking skills, bringing in professional volunteers. Uh, these are people who are senior vice presidents for local companies, retired executives for local companies like Allergan, Quicksilver. So they're very high level people that are bringing their expertise to our clients. That from that one class, now we serve, we offer about 60 different workshops on a monthly basis. Basic job seeking skills, resume development, mastering the interview, confidence building, overcoming obstacles, um, 30 who, different computer classes. And tell me again, who are you targeting this at? So it's very different today uh, than back in the old days when it was only women, victims of domestic violence. Today, the people that we're serving are literally your next door neighbor and your brother because our mission is to provide the unemployed and the underemployed with the skills and resources they need to get and keep a good job. Okay. And so, you know, back in 2009, people had to be certified low income in order to receive our services. But I'm not sure how, if you're really familiar with how social services work to get certified as low income with one of our nonprofit partners, mm-hmm. was a nine to 12 month process. So imagine, for most of Orange County, if you lost your job today and you couldn't get help until 9 to 12 wow. months went by, yeah, how bankrupt. could you keep a roof over your head or food on the table for your children? You Even today, the answer is you can't. Right. And so what we decided to do was to start providing our services to everyone who needs it immediately, regardless of whether they have a job or not. So if they're looking for a better job, if they're about to get downsized. Mm-hmm. And we were able to make a huge difference really fast. So uh, we also found out during our strategic planning process, we did an environmental scan and really dug into our data. And we found that if someone comes to our our programs 3.4 times, they are 90% more likely to get a job. Wow. And so, so we, any one of the programs, if they come through a series of them, they're... Right. Uh, wow. And so we redesigned how we deliver our programs to make sure that everybody gets an overview of what we do. And in one year, went from 1.7 times mm-hmm. to four times. And in one year, we went from 46% placement to 70% placement. And this year, it's 83% of our clients have a job within three months. Do you have... That's awesome. Uh, do you have relationships with employers in the county where they they know what you're doing and they're looking to your people as potential ads to their workforce? We do. We have about 200 employer partners that okay. we work with that provide us with job leads that aren't available anywhere else. We have employers that do hiring events on site, so they will provide us with um, the job openings that they have and the kind of people that they're looking for. We'll go through and pre-screen some of our clients and invite them to come to an on-site fair. Employers will come to our location, meet one-on-one with clients and do interviews, and many times do hiring right on the spot. Uh, do these have to be the larger companies? When, when you say 200, I'm thinking that, that can't be all the big, just big companies. No, you it's, know, it's, it's, it's companies. Across the it's uh, three-man shops okay. uh, and Fortune 500 companies. Okay. So it's a little bit of everything. So if there's a business owner in Orange County, Southern California, that's running a 5 or $10 million company and is having trouble finding p- employees, they can absolutely working come with to you us. might be a solution. Absolutely. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. And we're going to get to how you get in touch with Janie and her organization a little bit later. Um we have about three minutes until the break. Okay. But I'm wondering if you could share with our audience kind of your philosophy, your guiding principle mm-hmm. that you're using to lead and grow the organization. So I had a very different answer last time I was here. Um, but this time I'll tell you, a wise man told me a long time ago, he was one of my first staff leaders at the Boy Scouts. He said, Janie, the one thing you need to know is that it's better to beg for forgiveness than to ask for permission. Mm. And I have tried to instill that in my staff so that they have the flexibility to always do the right thing, even if it's against the, the rules. Okay. Um, if they, they can break the rules if it's the right thing to do. 
Um, and what we've created is this wonderful team of people that are completely empowered to do the right thing for our job seekers. Hmm. And I've learned that they are the experts, even the most basic entry level people. They're doing the job every day. They're right. hearing from our clients. They know what's best for our clients. So I try to always give them the flexibility and the option to do the right thing wow. and to change and to do new things. And it's, it's hard for people to um, become comfortable with that. But once they do, right. um, the, I mean, the sky's the limit in terms of what we can accomplish. I think the proof is in the culture, how, how you respond as an organization to those times when they make the decision that it turns out to be maybe not, Absolutely. didn't get the results it had anticipated. Absolutely. Right? We've yeah. had some spectacular failures, but from, from those great ideas that came out of having permission to do right. the right thing and not to have to ask first, We've had some spectacular successes. We've grown by 700% in the last six years. Jeez. How many people do you have now? Well, staff, I only have 12. Right. you got to keep that. But I have about 2,500 volunteers Jeez. who give us about 25,000 hours of volunteer service. Look at you. you got all these just, she's got all these facts just at the top of her head, just at her <laughs> command. All right. Well, my engineer's telling me i got to take a break here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> And for you loyal listeners to Critical Mass Radio Show and Podcast, you know that this is like a super short break. And when we come back, let's see, where am I? I want to ask you, why is it important not to only offer solutions for job seekers, but also walk them through the journey? So sure. we're going to do that when we come back with Janie Willick, uh, Janie Best, sorry, CEO of Women Helping Women. Uh, after this short word from me. All of our shows can be heard anytime on iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, several hundred former guests' websites whose CEOs have been on our show, and now it's on their website somewhere. You know, since we started doing the show in 2009, we've reached hundreds of thousands of listeners with our live stream here on octalkradio.net, our podcast, the live video that you might be watching on Facebook, which will go up on YouTube. Simply type in, Critical Mass Radio Show into your favorite podcasting software, and you'll get our wonderful weekly shows with outstanding guests like Janie Best, who is the CEO of Women Helping Women. Before the break, I said, can you share a holistic approach to helping a job seeker land a position and move in a career direction? Why is that important? Sure, because every job seeker has different needs. Um, I, I said before that the people that we sh we're serving are your next door neighbor and your brother. We have some people who have never had a job before. We have people that are our age that have been downsized, um, and that's a huge hit to your confidence. And everyone needs, everyone's needs are different. And Sometimes so I find those people are the least prepared to find a new job. They've worked for a company, and they right. don't have a network, and right. they're lost. Right, and they're, they're the people who have the really the biggest barriers because they have a lot of preconceived notions about what employers are looking for. Mm -hmm. They're typically very convinced that no one will want to hire them because they'll want to hire a 25-year-old instead, and that's absolutely not the case. Our job seekers, our, our employer partners will say nine times out of ten that they would much rather have an experienced mm -hmm. person, regardless of age, um, that has the best experience for the position. And so what we found is that we have a, so we have a unique approach in that we don't require people to go through a series, a set series of programming. Okay. So the only thing we require them to do is to go through our new, new uh, client orientation or welcome to WHW. Yeah, that's how so you onboard them, them. That's right. right. So we okay. give them an overview of all the programs that we offer, and we're able to do a little bit of one-on-one -on -one assessment to recommend to them which classes they should participate in. Hmm. And um, this helps... You know, each each person can pick and choose and then become more comfortable. It's a very loving, caring environment, but with some tough love at the same time. Okay. So if someone wants a job, we are absolutely going to help them. I think the one of the programs that makes the most sense these days, especially for the job seeker that we just discussed, uh -huh. is our Friday class series called Pathways to Employment. So we have um, confidence building overcoming obstacles, um, strengths finders assessments. We teach people Love to play that. to their strengths rather right. than focusing on their weaknesses. How to network, um, networking in action and employer um, networking events. Hmm. So really those are designed to help you get your mojo back when right. you've lost your confidence because yeah. you've lost your job or wow. if, you're, if you've been out of the workforce for a number of years or if you've never had a job before, networking is still incredibly important. 
97% of the jobs that are being found now are due to networking. It's not because Whoa. you answered an ad in Indeed or, or on Monster. Jeez. Yeah. Um, it, okay, uh, this Friday schedule, it, it sounds like this is probably something that's evolved based on the needs and sort of mm -hmm. the people that you, the, the mm -hmm. volunteers who said, hey, I can do this, I can do strength finders training for you kind of a thing as well. Is that uh, right? Part, sometimes it's because a volunteer instructor has come to us and said, I'd really like to offer this class. But most of them are because we have found trends in our job seekers of um, of things that they're lacking, that okay. they need to improve upon. Oh, okay. And so, as an example, so we've offered mock interviews for a number of years. Now our class is called Mastering the Interview, and it consists of, you know, interview best practices. There's a whole session on phone interviews, and now we do Skype interviews mm. as well because that's really changed. And most jobs now um, will do several phone interviews and a Skype interview rather than coming in person just because it's more efficient for the employer. Right. So it's a combination of things that our job seekers have asked for, trends in the workplace that we've noticed um, by interacting with our employer partners, and um, topics that come to us from our expert volunteers. Now, now, are these offered free, or is there a fee? I mean, how do you how no, do you do that? No, it's absolutely free. So everything, regardless of the person's background, is offered as a service yes, to them. Absolutely, everything is one hundred percent free. When I first started out with WHW, we were one hundred percent government funded. Today, we are one hundred percent privately funded. We do have a program where our job seekers. Um, are able to pay it forward okay. by supporting the organization. It's zero pressure. We have some signs up in the building that say, you know, our programs were offered to you at no charge because we have these people who invest in us. So if you would like to at some point in the future, we'd love to have that. Mm. And so we've started to have more and more clients that a couple of years down the road are supporting right, us. I would think. Um, but we feel it's really, really important to offer everything for free because our founder said that they never wanted anyone to be in a situation where they had to choose between looking good for an interview and feeding their children. Hmm. And so we want 100% of the job seekers' time and focus to be spent on looking for a job. We don't make them volunteer or have them pay. Um, it's all, all offered at no cost. So let's talk about... Um, your April 7th fashion show. I've been uh, a guest at and attended. So what? tell me a little bit more about it for the audience who may not be aware of it, and sure. then we'll tell them how to find out more about it by your website, et cetera. So. Sure. So uh, our annual luncheon and fashion show is our largest annual fundraiser. This is also our 25th anniversary as oh, wow. an organization. So it's our this, the theme is um, 25 iconic years, old Hollywood kind of theme. And as you remember, everyone dresses in theme for our event. Yes. Um, it's a fun silent auction, luncheon, live auction. We expect to raise over $200,000 to support wow. our programs that morning. Uh, it's a wonderful, fun event. It's not your standard chicken dinner. Right, right. It, it is fun. Yes. I, I mean, there's a lot of energy in the room. and. Mm -hmm. To raise two hundred thousand? Mm -hmm. That's a huge commitment from the from the community in supporting of WHW, huh? Right. All About right. half of it comes from through sponsorship opportunities, sure. through individuals and corporations and some local foundations. Mm -hmm. And the rest is raised on the spot that day by um, asking people to join Club two fifty nine, which is our right. private donor circle. It costs two hundred and fifty nine dollars to provide all of our programs to a client. So People have the opportunity to sponsor one client or ten clients, and uh, lots of generous people raise their paddles to support clients that way. That seems like that number's been consistent. Jamie. It has. And actually, we founded Club 259 in 2008. Over the years, as we added on more programs, it became more expensive. But about two and a half years ago, we went through every level of the organization to identify the most efficient ways to offer the deepest level of programming for our clients. Now costs just under Two hundred and sixty dollars. There's some change there. <laughs> but we're on a good dollars and eighty-seven cents <laughs> to provide our programs to a client. But when you uh, think about an investment of two hundred and fifty-nine dollars really? for a lifetime of economic self-sufficient, right? Self-sufficiency. It's um. It's, it's critical. It's, yeah. It's awesome how you've been able to expand your offering and expand the people community from which you right. offer to. Okay, so I've, I'm getting the you're out of time sign from my engineer. So I have to ask you. 
How does someone learn more about your organization if they want to get involved or maybe they want to come to the April 7th event? They can go to our website, which is whw.org. Follow us on social media. Facebook is Empowering Employment Success. Twitter is whwm2w. But please be sure to go to our website to learn all about all the great things that are happening at our 25th anniversary, including our facility move to Irvine in January. Oh, wow. That's next month. Yes. How, oh, are you excited? Yes. That's a big deal, though, moving, huh? Very excited. We've got double the square footage. We're going to be able to offer a program to more clients, and especially those in South Orange County who really need our help. Okay. And we'll be more accessible for those in North Orange County. So we're super excited. I'm so glad you're came back on give us an update on where your organization is you're to be commended for the work that you've done and the difference you're making in so many people's lives here in orange county thanks for being a friend of the show and a part of the critical mass community janey happy merry christmas happy new year and merry christmas to you Richard. finish it thank strong you. all right thank all right you. ladies and gentlemen i want to thank let's see who should i thank oh yes paul roberts the engineer for today's show yay for paul as well as our producers Joan Park, Crystal Nunley, and Haley Stern. If you'd like to connect with me on Twitter, my handle is CEO Peer Groups. On LinkedIn, I'm Richard Franzi, F R A N Z I. And our website is Critical Mass for F O R Business.com. Until our next show, I hope all of your business decisions will move your company in a positive organization.